morning, everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I hope you guys are all doing well today. I'm excited to be on here. I have some good things to cover today. We are going to talk uh, about some tips and tricks for autism and Asperger's, but they also apply to all of us, uh, communication and a traditional Christmas. So, um, Diana, if you're out there, I am live. <laughs> just got a message from her she was messaging to see if I was going live I'm a few minutes late um, our good morning Jill um, our our weather out here has been quite something a lot of wind um, a lot of rain a lot of snow and ice and trees have been down power's been out and thankfully my house is solar powered and so is the solar tower solar powered so good morning Tammy um, for those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Tammy Trier, and my family and I share our off-grid lifestyle at TrierWilderness.com, and we also educate about our lifestyle at TrierWildernessAcademy.com. You can go there today and take a free bread baking course um, if you haven't uh, knacked the homemade bread baking or you've never tried. It's a perfect opportunity. It's a step-by-step -step process through the bread baking, and uh, we'll certainly uh, benefit your home with the beautiful aromas that uh, permeate the home and the fresh bread. So check it out. And uh, we live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho and absolutely love our lifestyle and love sharing our knowledge and also inspiring others not necessarily to live an off-grid lifestyle but to be prepared uh, for whatever may come our way in varying ways um, not just um, in a prepper mindset but also in a faith-led mindset so I'm very grateful for you guys to be joining me today we talked last week about autism and I wanted to um, speak a little further on that um, for those of you that uh, missed last week's lessons, um, down below there in the resources you will find information on Temple Grandin. Temple Grandin is an amazing, inspiring resource for autism and Asperger's and, and special needs for that matter. And um, her video, um, the story of her life, is available to watch for free on Amazon Prime if you have Amazon Prime. So I want to encourage you guys to watch that. And um, the Mountain Boy and I have a very huge opportunity. We will be recording later today and probably into Friday for a video collaboration that we will be putting out on our YouTube channel uh, December 7th. And if you know people that are affected um, with special needs, with autism, Asperger's, um, those folks that may also want to homestead but are fearful uh, because of what that may mean for their special needs children, I encourage you to send them to uh, our YouTube channel, which they can quickly get to by going to treyerwilderness.com slash YouTube. There will be, I believe, six or seven of us that will be collaborating on this project and sharing our journeys and um, what um, our homesteading lives and lifestyles have done for our special needs children. And I'm really excited because the Mountain Boy and I will be um, sharing the nitty gritty and I think that that is what people need to see and understand and also just to understand um, what possibilities uh, are there for everybody. So. The things I want to talk about today are not necessarily just for people with autism, Asperger's, special needs. These are things that we can all put into place in our lives to help our lives and our daily routines to be more calm and um, maybe more stress-free is the word I'm looking for. Good morning, Holly. Also, what are you guys drinking this morning? Tammy, thank you. By the way, I've got my water and I have been faithfully drinking more water because she is leading me to that every time I ask she is drinking water. I've got my lavender tea this morning. Uh, yummy, very, very yummy. It's lavender and chamomile, which right there, by the way, is a great de-stressing and calming tea to drink. You can also put lavender oil in a bath. Uh, you can smell essential oils to get the effects of calming just by something as simple as just sniffing the bottle. Here's a bottle of lavender. This is from Plant Therapy. All you need to do is just take it 
and smell it and you will get the aroma therapy effects of essential oils. So it's very simple, it's easy to use with children in that regard and also to uh, be able to diffuse oils in your home is a, a huge, huge benefit. But something as simple as drinking teas can be very calming. So one of the things that I have found to be um, true with many children on the spectrum and with special needs um, is that their bodies need certain things. And in the description below, you will find lots of links today. Awesome. Tammy's drinking her water again. Thank you. And yes, I'm, I'm glad you helped me too. <laughs> Sometimes we need that reminder. I told you I was using an app before and I straight away from using that app. I really need to have that app on and reminding me to drink water. It's just, it's, unless I'm working out and I'm overheated, it's just not something that's triggered in the mind. So I've got to create a new habit. But um, one of the things that I found with the mountain boy, we had some really good angels and really good resources put in our path. Uh, God has blessed us greatly on that. And that's why I feel it's a very huge part of me to be an advocate and share our knowledge as well as it is for him. There's things that he feels very led to share and to help others. So I think our collaboration will be really cool. But one of the things that is important is making sure that they have a healthy diet. Um, a lot of times they can be very picky eaters. Um, they can have problems with the consistency of food. So, like an example, broccoli. He loved broccoli, um, but sometimes he struggled with the consistency of such foods. So, I was fortunate I didn't have to do this, but um, I know families that have, and it's an easy way to incorporate healthy food into the diet. Say, for example, your child likes hamburgers. You can grind up red beets, you can grind up broccoli, you can grind up spinach and puree it and add it into the burger and um, utilize getting um, the nutrients they need through um, hit, hidden foods, I guess you could call it, but incorporating it into other parts of their diet. Um, it's really important that they have a wholesome diet. A lot of them choose very, um, they, they like certain foods and they may not be the best for them. So if you can get them on a better diet, that is huge. Um, so there's a trick and a tip for you. The other thing is incorporating it into smoothies and different things like that. Um, but supplements were a huge part for the mountain boy. Calcium was something that he did not metabolize well and his body needed it. And just so you guys understand, something that's very unique about um, calcium is that it um, is like an insulation for the body. Hello, Leah, by the way. And Jill says, I have a vegetable dessert cookbook hiding vegetables in baking. Oh, very awesome. Very awesome. Maybe I'll have to get, if you can share that link with me, I will pass that on. Or if you want to share it in here, that is awesome. It's a great idea. Um, Tammy said she loves that idea. It's a really easy way to get nutrients back into our kids. Um, and they need that stuff. We need that stuff. We can't just live on meat alone and we can't live on junk food for sure. So getting the greens and incorporating the greens, finding things they like, finding the foods they like and, and then going from there. And that was one of the huge things that, that I did with the mountain boy in regard to his diet, which I will share in a second. But one of the things that was really important is the calcium. Calcium is like an insulator to the body. Um, our eyes are um, the means of receiving everything that's coming at us. And it was very overstimulating uh, for the mountain boy um, and I'm sure for many other special needs children. Good morning, Sherry Ann. And what we need to realize is that there are ways that we can make things calmer for our children. Calcium is one of them. Calcium was, is a form of an insulation so that whatever's coming in through the eyes, the body just doesn't go, <gasps> it actually allows the body to calmly receive what's coming in. Something else that you need to um, make a note of is um, prism lenses for their glasses. If they have glasses, or even if they don't have glasses, they can just get the prism lenses. Um, all three of us um, actually utilize the prism lenses in our glasses because they um, help de-stress 
the body through the eyes. And um, the mountain man and I are constantly moving, constantly. I'm constantly in front of a screen, and um, our eyes are the pathway into our bodies. So you got to look at it that way. So calcium is something that's very important for our special needs children. And a lot of the time, they do not metabolize the calcium they're receiving. So I had to do two things, and there's links below. I had to get him on a chewable um, calcium supplement, but I also needed to use a uh, calcium metabolizer, um, which is just a spray. It, it, it didn't have any flavor. It tastes like water. Um, it's a homeopathic um, item. Good morning, Chad. And you just spray that on their tongue, and it helps the body to metabolize the calcium they're intaking. Now, I said chewables. He has a really hard time swallowing pills still to this date. If they're too large, he just his tongue gets in the way. It just it, it he cannot he has a really hard time. So liquids and chewables are really important. And the chewables they usually have a decent flavor, so the kids will eat them. Worst case scenario, grind them up and put them in their food. Ice cream, applesauce. Um, juices, strong flavor juices are probably the best, but the chewables, like I said, have a decent flavor to them. Um, you know, so you try to focus on getting chewables that they will like, orange flavor, cherry flavor. But the calcium was huge in helping him to insulate from the overstimulation that he was receiving. Now there's also a component to that which is magnesium and the pill that I shared and the link that I shared is actually a chewable calcium magnesium um, chewable so it's two in one. The other thing is zinc, chewable zinc tablets. Um, that is another component so it's the magnesium, the calcium and the zinc and then vitamin B12. Those together keep our kids more like this instead of like this and that even for us on a long-term basis is just too much and you've got to consider what your children are experiencing and um, that is why the communication is also part of today's lesson and this is true for all of us if you live a life where you are overstimulated you may not be on the spectrum you may not be diagnosed with anything but you just you work a high-paced job you have a lot of stress in your life you know these are things that you can utilize too because like I said being like this is not good it's not healthy it doesn't feel good um, it might have momentary um, empowerment maybe for some of us but it's it's not good in the long term so being aware of what our children are experiencing is really huge and why I'm talking about this now is because one of the things that was really hard for the mountain boy previously was being in large crowds and too much noise too much uh, overstimulation um, I totally get where he was coming from because when I'm in large crowds I just I holding a conversation with one person is incredibly hard when you've got so many other things going on and I just I don't enjoy it myself I enjoy one-on-one -on -one conversations small intimate parties but when it gets over you know 10 people I don't have the desire to be there so you know when you feel uncomfortable you got to think about that as far as how our children feel too and that goes for children off the spectrum as well you know we can this time of year gets really crazy and uh, Personally, I'm a homebody and I would much rather enjoy intimate gatherings and just a traditional home style Christmas versus having to be everywhere and taking on everything. But this is something that's really important for our kids. So I wanted to point that out. And um, by providing them with these supplements, it helps them. The prism glasses also are amazing. I will put links. I didn't think to share that. That just sort of randomly came to mind. So. I will share that. Um, I hear that, Tammy. Uh, she doesn't like crowds either. The mountain man, you know, we are, and what's really funny is the mountain boy has now reversed. We were the ones that could handle the crowds previously, but just didn't care to. He couldn't handle them. And now we're the ones that want to stay home and kind of hibernate and hermit-like, and he's the one that wants to get out with the crowd. So that's good, though, because that has brought him out of his autism shell and has advanced him in, in ways. So it's very good for him to be social. It's a good experience for him. So we got to look at these things you know, as uh, stepping stones and uh, progressive things we can do to help our children progress in life. And that's just so fantastic. I'll still be a hermit, but he can go... He can go and, and get out there. Now, something else that I didn't mention that I have listed is probiotics. 
I've talked about this a lot. Gut health is important. Everything starts in our gut. Healing, mental uh, capabilities, everything. Everything starts in our gut. And if our gut is unhealthy because of what we are putting in our bodies, um, we are, we are, you got to start there. You got to heal the gut first in order to heal everything else. And um, unfortunately, our children, uh, especially on the spectrum, have a lot of gut issues, which we're going to talk about next. So having good acidophilus in their system is really important. You can do chewables, you can do liquids, you can do powders. Um, you can incorporate those into yogurts, but I'm going to talk about non-dairy yogurts because the next thing we're going to talk about is gluten-free and dairy-free diets. When we started the Mountain Boy on that diet, I will be the first to admit, it was extremely overwhelming. I was not 100% from scratch cooking um, for convenience. We did a lot of processed foods and um, at the time there weren't a lot of gluten-free items available. The ones that were were like cardboard and had no flavor and um, there weren't a lot of resources for me when he was young. So there has been a lot of advancements, a lot of great companies making a lot of healthy processed foods that are quick and on the go. Uh, we all need those, but you want to focus on the non-GMO and you want to focus on non-GMO raw ingredients. I created a cookbook that you can find by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Tammy Treyer. That'll take you to my Amazon page, my author page. And I made a cookbook that has all of our gluten-free recipes in there that we go to on a regular basis. There are also regular recipes as well. They have a gluten-free conversion and a dairy-free conversion in there. I did that to help other people because it was very overwhelming. It's, it was hard finding non-dairy items uh, that I could use for cooking as a good replacement. Rice milk is very watery and doesn't have a lot of flavor. But on the market today, you've got cashew milk, you've got coconut milk, you've got almond milks and you can make your own and those things are available uh, good morning Teresa and the thing that you need to realize is that what we put in our bodies makes such a huge difference the quality of the food that we are putting in makes such a huge difference and then for certain people their sensitivities I'm going to explain the dairy sensitivity that the mountain boy had um, if he had dairy of any kind it would cause his bowels to shut down. He lost the sensation that he had to make a bowel movement um, and we didn't, it was through myself and a holistic doctor that finally listened to me. Um, medical doctors would not acknowledge that this was an issue and I knew there was a problem. He had problems um, with accidents, he had problems um, where it looked like he was fighting, you know, just didn't want to use the toilet where it wasn't that at all. As soon as we stopped the dairy in his diet, everything went back to normal and he was able to get the sensation. But without testing and, and going with the mother's intuition, uh, that wouldn't have, been, wouldn't have been found. So you mothers out there of special needs children, continue to persevere and push if you feel there is something very different about your child that you can see that you can't quite wrap your head around but you know there's something up don't give up because um, our medical doctor our pediatrician stopped talking to me when I told him that Austin was diagnosed with autism because he refused to acknowledge that where if he would have looked at his charts and looked at the progression he would have seen it but he was in denial and he did you know so you've got to fight and my pediatrician was a good pediatrician old school doctor but you got to fight for what you feel and what you know uh, us mothers have that gut instinct and and you've got to trust your guts don't you've got to trust your guts I just can't say that anymore and and I've learned I learned that early um, and if I have to be a pain in somebody's backside for my children, you better believe I am going to be a pain in their backside. I am not going to go about it in an aggressive, ugly way. I met women that stood on chairs in meetings and just totally flipped out. That doesn't do our children a service. It doesn't do the, our children a justice, and it doesn't make things happen. You go after what you need for your children with your heart and your gut. And if you sit there bawling your eyes out to get things accomplished, they are going to learn to have empathy through what you are fighting for because you're fighting for your children. So don't give up. 
can fight hard. It's so important. It's so, so important because if I wouldn't have been that way, he wouldn't be where he is today. And it's really important that you get your whole family on board with the diet. And it's also really important that you don't just go into the diet and, well, oh, we don't have anything accessible to us today, so here, have a, a ro roll or a, a piece of bread or here's a cup of milk or here's a big hunk of cheese. You can't do that. We were in a situation where I had everybody on board and Austin was trying to become an advocate but his biological family refused to be on board. So every other weekend, despite my please don't give him any dairy, please don't give him any weed, he would get a slice of pizza directly following our meetup and he would receive an ice cream cone before he came home. So I had to have the school board on board because what was happening with the dairy was that it would also cause him to go into extreme tantrums. He threw his desk across the room one day and he threw pencils and, and then he'd sit there and he'd cry because he didn't mean to be that way but the dairy caused him to be, the doctor said it best, it was like he was on LSD. And the fact that he was being given those things was out of spite. There wasn't anything I could do about it in our court system. There wasn't anything that medically claimed that gluten or dairy was uh, a healer for autism. So I didn't have a foot to stand on. And it finally got to the point where Austin got to an age where he could fight for it, even though they would still slip him things. And what happened as a result of that is he had a colonic once we were out here. And a colonic is a cleanse of your intestinal tract. And the doctor said that his bowel muscles were that of an 80-year-old. So it does make a difference, guys, and it does matter. We can harm our children if we don't listen to them and, and pay attention to their bodies and their needs just as much as we pay attention to ours because they can't always communicate what they are experiencing, but we need to pay attention to what's happening. So I, want, I, I know that this is um, you know, pretty drastic, um, not all children have that affecting their bowels the way it affected Austin, but it does affect how the the gut flora and and their the you know if they if your children are constantly experiencing gut pain, there's a good chance it's dairy. So by eliminating that completely out of their diet, you give them a better chance to actually think better, function better, and. Praise the Lord, we had a good principal and, and special needs teachers who paid attention to the calendar. They knew that he would be coming off of a dairy high and that it was going to stay in his system for four days and that they could experience outbursts and total chaos. And I'll explain to you how bad it was. The day he threw the desk, his, his classroom was up here at this end of the building on the second floor. His principal was down here on the lower level at that end of the school and she could hear him. And, and the fact that he would sit there in remorse and, and, and feeling so sad that he behaved that way but totally being unable to control it is a really sad thing. And I know many of you with children on the spectrum, I've had to do it where your children just have absolute outbursts, constant outbursts. That was what our life was like before we figured out the diet and the need for the diet. I would have to get behind him while he was throwing a fit, put my arms around him, wrap my legs around his legs, and just go down in Indian style and just sit there and calm him and, and, and get him to um, stop the outburst. We'd be in the grocery store and he would throw a fit because I'd simply say no. But I wasn't going to cave. I wasn't going to change rules and change um, things to meet his behavior. I needed to change his behavior. I needed to figure it out and that's what we did. I'll, I'll never forget being in the grocery store and he was throwing a tantrum in the, fr in the freezer section and the store manager looked at me and said, you need to get your child under control. Uh, my eyes wanted to pop out of my head, the, the snakes come out of my ears and just grab him by the hair and shake him because he didn't understand. And neither does society a lot of times and that's why we need to educate and why we need to try to help our children. I was a single mom. I had limited time. I needed to get groceries in the grocery store and there were times I took him out to the car to calm him down and there were different approaches that I took but this was one of the biggest ones because his total and entire life changed. He went from speaking in like gibberish to sentences 
once we got him on the dairy because he went like this instead of like this all the time. The supplements helped. The wheat is also very rough on their guts, so um, I don't want to um, not, you know, make gluten sound like it's not a big deal. It is. It's very important. And wheat and or gluten, wheat, dairy, whey, all of that are extreme fillers in all of our food. So that's why I went to a complete from scratch diet. That's why I have in my cookbook, and you can find all those recipes on our website too. Every, web, uh, every recipe that's on our website has a gluten-free conversion for it. And the reason for that is because I spent a whole summer once we were out here um, getting to the point where all of my gluten-free food tasted of regular food that the mountain man couldn't tell the difference with the exception of bread because bread does take on a different consistency when it's made with uh, the gluten-free flours. But everything else, I, I pulled the wool over his eyes. So it can be done. And, and there are snack bars and, and snacks and treats and meals and all of that. And when you're cooking from scratch, you making if you're making meat, potatoes, and a vegetable, you don't have to worry about gluten or dairy. And um, as far as sweet treats and pizza, I found alternatives to that that enabled me to be able to keep his life normal and allow him to have the foods he liked without having to worry about it. And I will say, when you go to a party, it is the hardest thing because what is the first thing that people want to give children? Calcium. They want to give them milk. They want to give them a big hunk of cheese. So, you know, maybe that's why I didn't like parties because I felt like, you know, um, the whip at parties, I had to constantly be watching who was giving him what and, and what he was getting into and what he was eating because I knew the consequences. And I also knew what it was going to do to him. So as far as having outbursts and everything else. So, you know, we want to be there for our children. We want to do whatever we can do to assist them and help them. And it really comes down to us paying attention and listening. Sometimes not always to what they are necessarily speaking, but what their body is saying. And um, it can make such a huge, huge difference. So, and if you guys have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And if you know others, you know, please don't hesitate to share that information. You know, this information, share this with them. Put it on your wall so people are aware of what we can do to help our kids because it's so important. Plus, we can help ourselves. Some of you may have gut issues. Some of you may be dealing with things. Today, our dairy is one of the worst things filled with toxins. There's hormones and and antibiotics and garbage in our dairy and then that's in our cheese and our cheese is processed poorly. So it's really important that we are finding good processed dairy and non-GMO dairy products for ourselves. Dairy is going to kill your gut too. And honestly guys, because of the way wheat is processed today, um, our, our guts are a mess and it's a result of the gluten and I can speak for that because I have been down since Thanksgiving with my skeletal system not staying in place. My knees, my pelvis, my spine and my jaw have not been wanting to stay in place and thankfully today, yesterday I could feel the inflammation leaving and that was a result of sugar and it was organic non-GMO sugar but it's sugar in my body so we need to listen to our bodies because sugar and gluten uh, cause inflammation and I can't have inflammation in my body. It just causes, as you can see, weird things to happen. So not only do we need to listen to our children and pay attention to what's happening to our children but we need to listen to our bodies. Our bodies tell us what we need and what we don't need and what we should be eating and what we shouldn't be eating if we pay attention and if we are willing to want to give up some things or find alternatives. So keep that in mind. Now there is an oil recipe listed below also. All you need is an um, empty uh, uh, rollerball applicator. I have links for those things down there. I have links for the different oils. I use many different kinds of oils. I talked about that previously. Um, I love doTERRA oils. I also love plant therapy oils, Rocky Mountain oils. Um, the Now brand is a good brand of oils. So, you know, you need to find something that's cost effective for you, but that is, the oils are processed well and are of good quality. And the oil blend is something that we can all use. It's a very calming oil and it helps us to not only calm but balance our minds. How many of you are trying to do things and you can't function, you can't think? As soon as you have a, a, a thought, it's out the other side. That's part because we're pushing ourselves too hard and going at too fast of a pace. But it's also, uh, you know, our brains need 
um, attention and our brain, you know, we can read our bodies too. And there's some easy things we can do to give ourselves uh, calmness as well as clarity. Diana says, finally able to be here. I didn't see the live stream, so I was listening to your bread baking 101 video. Oh, okay, cool. Well, and you can always go back and watch, Diana. I'm glad you're here. I was a few minutes late, so I apologize, but I am glad you're here. Um, the oil blend is noted as an autism blend, but like I said, anybody can use it. It has 10 drops of vet vetiver. Vetiver is a very thick, thick oil. It's very difficult to get out of the bottle, so I'm going to give you a tip. Use a toothpick to help antagonize it to come out of the bottle. And you need 10 drops of that, 10 drops of lavender, 10 drops of serenity, 10 drops of balance, and 10 drops of ylang ylang. And then you add fractionated coconut oil um, and just put that in a rollerball applicator. Now, some children on the spectrum and some adults have problems with smells. I didn't used to, but I do now, and I've mentioned it previously. You can use um, lemongrass oil to assist you with strong odors. So you can just smell lemongrass, put a little bit underneath your nose here. Um, by smelling that, it coats your sinuses and it enables you to handle strong odors better. So I do know several children that are on the spectrum that have a horrendous struggle with smells. And that is a great way, if they can handle the smell of lemongrass, to help them. And even if they can't, if they can get the lemongrass past them, then the other odors won't bother them and they'll, they'll have less stress um, as a result. Now, you can add these oils however you need to. You can put it on the back and the nape of their neck. You can put it at their temples. You can put it on their wrists. I put some of the oils on my wrists so that I can constantly keep smelling them while I'm working. Um, you can also put it on their feet. Vetiver is an interesting oil. It smells like dirt, um, but it is a very good oil for children on the spectrum and with special needs. So. You know, even if you don't notice that your children are having struggles, um, if they have problems concentrating or learning, this is a great oil. But it's, a, it's just a great overall calming, and um, I would recommend using it all the time with your children because I think that it will help just as the spectrum lenses will help them, it will help calm them and um, just give them a better opportunity to do what they need to do throughout their day. So, you know, if it's part of your routine that you put it on the bottom of their feet when you when they put their socks on in the morning. Um, Austin used to carry this in his pocket when he even when he was working at the saw shop. If he had a day where he wasn't able to concentrate real well, he would just pull it out and smell it. So, these are really good oils, but they're also good for us, guys. If you are having struggles, and another good oil that I recommend is Intune by doTERRA. This is a great oil and the oils that are mentioned in here, uh, Serenity and Balance, are um, proprietary blends by doTERRA. Um, so um, if you're looking for those, but a lot of these companies have made similar, brand, uh, similar products. So um, you can compare by going to the websites and um, looking at the oils that are contained within these proprietary blends and find uh, a match uh, um, in another company if you would prefer that. So, uh, and if you have questions, please don't hesitate. But these are really great oils. Balance is really a unique oil blend in and of itself. If you use that at night, it will calm you to help you sleep. If you use it in the morning, it will rejuvenate you and give you a better boost for your day. So it's pretty awesome how the body works. Um, it's an amazing healing machine if we allow it to and if we listen to it. So the biggest thing I want to get across today is pay attention to yourself and your body but also if you have special needs children pay attention to them because their outbursts, their, their quirky ways may be a result of just too much stress. I mean I'd be doing a jig too if I was under the stress that their bodies are under just from um, the way they receive things and the overstimulation. So keep that in mind. Yes, Intune is great, Tammy said, and yes, it is It is a great oil blend. And like I said, this stuff is not just for special needs children. This is for all of us. Now, 
I have links for the different oils um, in the description below. I have Plant Therapy, Rocky Mountain Oils, and doTERRA. And then I also have a link to what we have learned and overcome with autism. I wrote a post and there's a lot more um, in-depth detail there of the different things that we've utilized, overcome, put into place. Um, the most important ones are the ones I covered today. Gut health is extremely important and I just, uh, you know, Paying attention to our kids is just so huge. Um, one of the things we also did was hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Diana says there are websites that have charts giving you what oil blends are the same for different companies. Oh, awesome. I'll have to look that up and then I can provide a link. Thank you, Diana. Um, with, uh, oop, I lost my train of thought and that's okay. That happens. I need to smell the in tune. <laughs> um, Oh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy was the other thing that we did with the Mountain Boy, and that was the biggest thing we did um, for short-term assistance for him. We did that for seven months, and as a single mom, I couldn't afford that, but I bartered um, with a doctor and helped him uh, with his website and, and different web needs. And what a blessing. Um, we did that for seven and a half months. And we did it twice a week. Each time we had a session, it was an hour. And we would get into this canvas um, tube. Uh, and it was tall enough that we could sit kind of hunched over or we could lay in it. I had to go in it with him because if he would have an episode in there, uh, you can't decompressurize it right away. So that way I could be in there with him. But they would pressurize it with oxygen and he would breathe. And at the time, he went in that... Um, he was in third grade, he was at a pre-premer reading level, and during that time, and he loved to read, he loved books. From the time he was an infant, he had all those little cardboard chunk books surrounding him in his crib. Sometimes you had to make room for him. And uh, he went from a pre-premer reading level to a uh, high second grade reading level in those seven months, so it was phenomenally huge. And additionally, and that was just from uh, forced oxygen. So. If you can't afford to do it, uh, the same doctor that helped us actually rents the chambers or had rented the chambers, I need to inquire on that. So he would mail it to you. It's something you could do in your own home. I don't believe we could do it here because of being off grid and the amount of power that it would require. Um, like this time of year, I couldn't do it. Uh, we're very limited on sunshine this time of year, so we're kind of very frugal. But you could get together if there's a bunch of you that have special needs children. Um, maybe one of you could uh, you you could all rent it together and and take turns using it in someone's home or in a location, maybe a church. So keep that in mind. Um, the other thing you can do is just get them to breathe. I shared the Wim Hof method last week on breathing, and uh, it's really really uh, amazing. You know, I I think most of us don't breathe properly for starters and once we start really breathing that's very healing it enables the body to do so much more so getting your children to breathe breathing is a way to de-stress and get us out of fight and flight mode also Tammy says I was told that if you need what an essential oil contains you will like the smell sometimes one will smell good one day but not the next because you don't need it that day it's very true it's very true. It's also the same applies when you're craving something, most, case, most cases. Um, the Mountain Boy used to crave pickles all the time, and he needed that uh, extra probiotic in his gut, and he needed the um, uh, vinegar and just that tartness to help uh, with the alkalinity in his body. So, and, and the doctor said that children are usually the most in tune with their bodies because they know what their body needs and they listen to what it needs. We don't. Now, some of our cravings are for things like Ben and Jerry's, which, you know, your body might need at that moment, but not for medicinal purposes. <laughs> so, but yes, that's very true. And thank you for pointing that out. That's really, really true of a lot of different areas of our bodies. So our bodies are an amazing healing machine if we're willing to listen to it. Oh, awesome. Diana shared the link for the comparison um, from Rocky Mountain Oils on the different blends. So awesome. Thank you very, very much. I spend so much time researching, I get lost in my research. So that was something that I didn't even consider looking for. So thank you. See how we help each other? So awesome. Okay, so the other thing I kept in our description from last week was the seasonal cold issues and being able to drain your lymphatic system, drain your ears when they are clogged, drain your sinuses. Our lymphatic runs through our entire body 
and oftentimes when we have the seasonal colds, our face is clogged, our lymphatic is clogged here. There's ways to unclog it and to quickly heal our bodies. So don't forget to click on those links and then bookmark them or add them to your Evernote because Evernote is like so important to have on your phone and on your computer so that you can keep track of all those things. Guys, I'd also like you to go into the description and take a look at our prayer requests. I don't, I think it's awesome. Um, and I feel very honored and blessed that so many people reach out to me on a regular basis and even more so um, as of late to request for prayers. Um, good things, bad things, um, healing, and, and sometimes just the uh, um, unspoken prayers. And um, the names are there. God knows their need. Um, there are so many this week um, that I'm going to quickly run through them. And I would just like you guys, for those of you that are my prayer warriors, to jump on this list and keep them in your daily prayers and just put that halo over top of these people. We have Tia, Shelly, Jess, Deborah Kidd and Pat Kenny are both going through chemotherapy right now, and Pat Kenny needs some extra prayers for his heart, but God is working miracles with that man, so keep praying. I'm so excited. Uh, we have Diana. Uh, Diana's on here, and Diana is looking for a property and needs a rental property, so keep her in your prayers. We have Libby and John and Elna, Patty, Andrea, Courtney and uh, her family. Courtney is going through a um, brain surgery, and... Uh, she needs some really extensive prayers, so please keep them and the family in prayer because the family, too, is uh, they're a very faith-led family. But uh, please, please pray for them. They are going through their trials right now. And Terry and his wife, we have uh, Mama Mona and Papa Ken, Suzanne and Denzel, Bill and Sue, Rick and Dolly, Val and Cindy, Ben, Austin, uh, Deanna and Russ. Darren and Brian, Scott and Mary, Scott and Ashley, Chad, Taylor and her family, David, Lori, Shannon and Angela, David and Donna, Karen, Jane, Carol, and the Schaefer family. Schaefer family, just a little background on that. Their young boy got caught in farm equipment and uh, uh, was not doing well and needed excessive prayers. So if you could keep the family in your prayers, I would so appreciate it. Um, so if you need prayer or you know somebody that needs prayer, um, it is quite the honor for us to add you to our list and to have our prayer warriors lifting you up. And as I stated, if you have prayers and don't wish to share your um, details, you don't have to. We just need to know that you need prayer and that's enough. So please don't hesitate and don't hesitate to private message me also if you need prayer. Um, it's a very powerful tool. And God has blessed us greatly and um, through prayer. And uh, it's a privilege, so don't hesitate. Also, um, I just want to share um, my favorite verse, uh, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Also, if you keep the mountain man in your prayers, he has, has not been feeling well. Also, um, and uh, just put uh, prayers out for the Treyer family. We've got some things brewing. The Mountain Boy has some really exciting things brewing. And uh, we are still going through our valley, but um, we're not going to be defined by it. So we just keep trudging forward and sharing our knowledge and sharing God's grace. I'll be praying for these. So grateful for brothers and sisters in Christ praying for me and my husband and for all those on the list. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's quite an awesome thing we've got going here, guys. You make me very proud, and I'm just so proud to be a part of such an amazing community, and I'm glad to have you guys joining me. So, as far as communication goes, communication is one of our most valuable personal tools we have. Um, not only for us to communicate with others, but for us to listen. Um, and being good communicators and good listeners is really important this day and age. Everybody's so fast-paced and, you know, there's people hurting and we aren't listening. Sometimes they are speaking and they are telling us and we're just too absorbed in ourselves and our own things that we're not hearing. And um, also, you know, we tend to be so busy that we push people away um, when they have awesome things to share or when they, when they just need to communicate. And um, I've made it a huge practice this year that when somebody needs my attention, I stop what I'm doing and I consider it a divine break. 
a divine break in my day, um, maybe a way for me to serve, maybe a way for me to minister or um, just share love with somebody. So consider the opportunities to listen and communicate as valuable as praying for somebody and being there for somebody. Um, Diana said, valleys hold the most water, praying for your refreshment spiritually and physically. Thank you. You know, it, it's so it's so weird. You know, we're going through such a rough, rough valley. And it's it's been a long valley. Um, I really think that this year was the worst of the three, although um, three years ago was medical issues. and But the thing that's so amazing with this journey is the growth that has come from it. And, you know, people ask me, you know, how we're doing. And I feel amazingly blessed that and there are hard days there have been some really hard days this year but I feel like I'm to a point where those hard days are past me and it's because of my perspective and it's because of my strong faith and trust muscles that have grown so amazingly um, and and you know I, I really feel that this valley has been an amazing valley because of the growth that has come from it. Um, nobody likes to go through a valley. Nobody likes to be in a bad spot. But I just feel God using us through this and, and God growing us and strengthening all of us in such a neat way. So perspective through the valleys and having strong faith and trust um, makes the valley uh, so much more bearable. So I don't know for what that's worth. But this is actually tomorrow's devotional. I kind of read ahead, but it was pretty powerful and it kind of played a role in what I was talking about today. And uh, I think God divinely planted it. So um, Mark 4, 9 from the message is, Are you listening, really listening? How well do you listen? Studies show we forget 50% of what we hear immediately, 80% within a day, and 97% within a week. That's pretty scary. Um, praise the Lord for Evernote, right, Chad? <laughs> I think that's why I remember so much of what I do. Plus, I'm determined. So, um, so what's the solution? When you listen, make understanding your goal, not just remembering the facts, but understanding them. Great learners are great listeners. That's why they always have a flow of fresh ideas. The truth is you'll never know how close you are to a breakthrough or a blessing until you learn to listen. Be honest. How often have you said you're going to spend more time listening to the people in your life who matter? Probably pretty often. Start doing it because if you don't show up for life's special moments, before you know it, there will be none left to show up for. And that's really true. I'm going to share a link to a song when we're done here. It's a really powerful song and I really, I like listening to it. It's, um, it's a, a seed planted, let's put it that way. The people who really listen to us become the most important people in our lives. If you want to be one of them, you must do three things. One, look directly at the speaker. Don't belittle someone by catching up on work, talking on the phone, or tweeting and texting while you're talking. Focus on them. Make eye contact. Know that they are there and let them feel loved and important by giving them your attention. Two, don't interrupt. When, when you do that, people think you don't place much value on what they're saying or that you're trying to impress them with how much you know or you're too excited by what you have to add to the conversation to let them finish. Three, suspend your judgment. Wait to hear the whole story before you respond. If you don't, chances are you'll miss the most important things the speaker has to say. Can you think of anyone you haven't been listening to lately? The good news is it's not too late to become a good listener. So it's listening with our ears, pay attention with our eyes, and, and um, really being a light to others. Uh, you know, we, it's the same adage, you know, treat others as you'd like to be treated. You know, if you want people to give you attention when you are speaking, you need to do the same for them, regardless how trivial or whatever you may feel they have to share. It's important to them, and we need to acknowledge that and recognize that. And I just think it's important. You know, the communication the Mountain Boy and I have had over the years um, 
has been really amazing. Um, I love the fact that he will share anything with me, regardless how embarrassing it may be or how odd of a topic it may be. Um, we have a very open relationship, and that has come from years and years of practice. And it's really an awesome thing because, you know, through the years, you don't want to lose communication with your teens or your children because it gives them an opportunity to get messed up in other things. And having that communication and that openness gives them an open door when things do get funny in their lives or, you know, ex experimentation opens up or whatever the case may be. Um, they have a place to go and a refuge and someone to talk to without judgment, without reaction, um, and just being willing to listen. And I, I feel very blessed by the, that communication level. And, and communication is so important in so many levels of feeling loved, of feeling needed, and also just that communication with our bodies and our children's bodies is really, really important. Um, acknowledging... Um, you know, that they have needs, our needs, and listening to them. So I just, I really wanted to touch on that today, and I felt it was really appropriate that it kind of fit into everything today. So the other thing that was on our list to talk about today was just a traditional Christmas and going back to our traditional roots and not getting caught up in materialism and commercialism and, and all those things, but, you know, having a a season um, that's focused on the right reasons, the reason for the season for starters, and that quality time spent with family, not worrying about what you're getting each other or what you're receiving. It's a matter of what we can give of ourselves and taking time to play games rather than sitting on machines um, and just spending quality, quality time. It's just so incredibly important. So. As I'm saying that, the mountain man is getting ready to leave uh, for the day. So I am going to end this with a prayer so I can say goodbye and, and spend some quality time with him quickly before he leaves. And um, like I said, if something in this resonated to you today and you feel that it will be of help to others, please share it because the more we can reach, the more um, we can add to our community of amazing, amazing people and amazing prayer warriors. And I just love the way you guys uh, just intermingle and, and are there for each other. So, dear Jesus, I just thank you for the blessings that you've given us, for our bodies that are healing machines, and for the knowledge that you provide to us. Just help each and every one of us to learn how to utilize the resources available to us, to utilize our bodies and our minds to their greatest potential to help our children to uh, be able to do the same and to step out of their autism shells that the world wants to you know, keep hidden. Uh, they say so often that they'll never do this and they'll never do that and they won't do this and they won't do that. That's such a bunch of bull. We have the ability to get past so many things if we are willing to work hard for it and work at it and to use our resources and to learn. So don't ever settle for you won't ever. Uh, be willing to fight for what you want and what you dream of and what you dream of for your children. And Lord, I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around all of our prayer needs this week. There are so many and there's good, good ones, healing ones, heartache, and Lord, you know all their needs. So I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around them, let them feel your presence, be there for them. And Lord, just thank you and, and wrap your arms extra around all these prayer warriors that are willing to lift these people and, and, and wrap these, your arms around these people for having the courage to request prayer. That's huge. It's something that we should very freely and easily ask for, but so many people are afraid to ask for prayer. And that is such a gift you've given us to be able to pray for others and to be able to uh, reach you through prayer. So, Lord, just um, put that on people's hearts to do it more often. And just thank you for what you're going to do in all of our lives. I thank you in advance because you have miracles and blessings that go in front of each and every one of us every day. And oftentimes they are missed. So, Lord, thank you for what you do. Thank you for what you're going to do. And just be with all of these people, those uh, that are live, those that are watching the replays and on YouTube. And, Lord, just love up on them. And, Lord, thank you for blessing me with their company, their friendship, their uh, attention and, and, and just their presence. And Lord, I love you and ask all of this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. I hope that I've uh, 
provided you with some information that will be of help to you and or those you love and know. And, and I look very forward to seeing you next Wednesday at the same time, 1030 Pacific Standard Time um, on Wednesday. And, and just uh, be a light to others. Serve someone this week, someone in your family, someone, a stranger, someone you don't know. And thank you for being a part of this. Love you guys. Have a great rest of your week. God bless.